Uh, let me start by thanking everyone for being here this morning. Uh, we suffered a tragedy last night in our city. Around 10.30 p.m., officers from the North Precinct responded to the 1400 block of 21st Street North regarding a female victim who had been shot. The victim was found in the living room, deceased from a gunshot wound. A witness who lived nearby stated the suspect came to the residence while she was there and was asking to see his kids. The suspect left the residence and then the witness also departed. Sometime later, the witness heard several gunshots, stepped outside to see several kids running towards her. Three of the kids had been shot and the fourth was either grazed or injured by a bullet. All four kids are at the hospital and all four are in stable condition. There were four other kids at the residence who were not injured, so we're extremely thankful for that. Uh, we, of course, initiated an intensive investigation, called in several other units, including K-9 and our crime reduction team, because we wanted to get this man off the street quickly. Within six hours, we had the suspect arrested. He was located near the area of 18th Street North and 17th Court North. He was found asleep, laying on the front seat of a vehicle covered with clothes. According to the officers who put handcuffs on him, he was compliant and actually seemed relieved to be arrested. He was transported to police headquarters where he's being interviewed now. I must say there was a history of domestic violence at this residence. We ask for the thoughts and prayers for this family and for these kids who have lost their mother. The investigation is ongoing as we continue to try to piece uh, all of these elements together which led to this crime last night. So at this time we'll bring the mayor up uh, for some comments. Thank you, Chief. Uh, it is always a tragic circumstance when uh, this city experienced the death of an individual, especially to domestic violence. Uh, we're calling upon all agencies and organizations that are involved with developing programs for domestic violence to come together to look at guidelines, policies, and procedures that we can come together on that will give uh, individuals who are caught up in situations of domestic violence uh, more support in their efforts to be, be relieved of that situation. Uh, I've asked the chief to look into speeding up the process by which uh, he's been working on a plan to develop a one-stop uh, justice center for domestic violence in which an individual can come and get all of the support necessary to uh, extract themselves from those types of situations. Uh, our prayers go out to this family and all the individuals who were uh, injured by this tragedy and we have the individual in custody but there are so many other situations out there that uh, if someone finds themselves in a similar situation they need to speak up and uh, bring it to our attention so that we can help to take immediate action to get them out of those types of situations. Uh, Chief. So at this time, we'll take a few questions. Chief, was there any kind of rest uh, restraining order, any kind of legal action taken by this woman against the boyfriend that we know of? Uh, preliminarily, what we've determined is in March, she took some legal action. Uh, but of course, it didn't prevent what occurred last night. It's just very tough because these situations often involve relationships. And in this case, we have the suspect who are saying all eight kids were his, that he was the father of all eight kids. So there's this connection, which is extremely difficult to break. And that's the challenge when it comes to domestic violence. And, and it's not something the police department can solve by itself. That's why we need the partners. And we need a greater awareness in our communities because quite often people will look the other way when they see the signs. But we're asking everyone to step up and be counted when you suspect that a friend or a family member is a victim of domestic violence. Do you know what exact kind of legal action that was? No, it's too early to tell right now, but, but we're, we'll have all that figured out as we continue with the investigation. Do you know Archie, when the last this... time you were called to the scene was? Uh, not at this time, but we're working through all that. It's <laughs> extremely fluid. Uh, the suspect is in this building right now being interviewed, 
And so we still have a lot of work to do. Even though he's in custody, uh, we're just really beginning the in-depth piece of this investigation. Can you Talk tell about us the, the ages? Of the children, the children you say are stable, but detail, serious, critical what? I would say serious. Uh, the fact that these kids were shot, uh, it's not something that, that they can easily recover from. So we know they're getting the best medical care right now, but we're still working through that. Uh, there's gonna be physical injuries, but also psychological injuries that they'll have to deal with for years to come. And they said the 12 year old was quite light, right? The last time it was, has that changed? He's stable too? At this time, the latest report is all the kids are in stable condition, but it's fluid. And so that's why we're asking for the thoughts and prayers. And we can get the ages for the kids uh, here in a moment. Yes, sir, the kids that weren't shot. Yes. And when will you be releasing the victim's name and the suspect's name? Uh, as soon as we can get the suspect charged, uh, we'll release his name. And, uh, and as soon as we're aware that all of the family is aware of the, the victim, we'll release her name also. Uh, the coroner's office is doing what they do. And so we're still working through it. We still have a lot of work to do. And uh, we appreciate the support of the community as we cope with this as a community. And uh, we're just thankful that the other kids were not injured. What happened to the, the other children? Are they with family now? Can you tell us what, are, are they involved in care? Who, who's taking care of these kids? Uh, the other kids are with family members. And so this is something that the entire family is wrapping their arms around. It's, it's a shock to them that this could occur in the, in the still of the night. Uh, so we just ask everyone to remember them. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do and just need the support of the community. This family needs the support of their, of their friends. And so Birmingham is a resilient community and these are the times where we have to come together as one. Has the suspect given any indication as to his motivation why he did this? This will be the last question. Uh, the interview has just started. Uh, we have experienced investigators who are interviewing this subject right now. Uh, he's talking, which is good. And so we hope to determine the motive. Uh, it won't make it easier, but it may add some type of sense of what transpired and what we can do in the future to prevent these types of incidents from occurring. So we're, we're thankful that we were able to get him in custody without any injuries to him. So now we can work through it as we go through the interview process and collecting additional evidence. Thank you so much.